Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. God's counsel and His ways is the title of this devotion. There's a scripture here in Proverbs 16, and I want to encourage you to take this word to heart to help kind of light up, so to speak. The Bible says the word in Psalm 119 verse 105 is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, the Word of God can give you light when you're kind of wondering, okay, Lord, how am I to walk through this? And how am I to find my way through this? And, and today I want to talk a little bit to you about your own desires and thoughts and feelings that really can sometimes cloud our judgments. And it's kind of like the worst time to go grocery shopping is before you eat you know, if you go to the grocery store before you eat, then most likely you will buy more than you need because you're hungry. If you go to the grocery store after you eat, you might buy less because you're not so hungry. It's a simple example. In other words, when there's hunger, and not just physical hunger as in food or thirst, but emotional or moral hunger, you know, then you can sometimes make decisions that later on you might think, hmm, that was not the best choice I just made. So listen to, the, that's a little bit the, the, the guiding of this devotion today. So listen to this verse here that has really helped me and does today. I mean, I, I, I read it often because it so helps me. It is Proverbs 16, verse 3, and I'll read it from the Amplified. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to Him. He will cause your thoughts to come, to become agreeable to His will, and so shall your plans be established. Okay, let me read it again. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to Him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to His will, and so your plan shall be established and succeed. Roll your works upon the Lord. Roll all your need, or as Peter would say in 1 Peter chapter 5, cast all your care upon the Lord, and He will care for you. But you bring it to the Lord, your desires, your longings, your wanting, or as David would say here in Psalm 73, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Again, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And that is so important for us to live in the counsel of God. Because the Apostle Paul makes it very clear in the book of Galatians that our natural desires will contend for the Spirit's guidance in our life. And we have to choose if we're going to live to please our own desires, or we're going to live to please the Holy Spirit. They that live to please the Spirit show the spirit of sonship, and those who, those who live to please their own carnal nature show the spirit that has fallen short of God's glory, the nature of sin. You have to really choose in life. And, and while some people are worried that if they choose to be led by God's Spirit that they may do without because they realize these desires in me are not right. They're sinful. And if I go God's way, I have to give them up. I can guarantee, guarantee to you that if you choose to delight yourself in the Lord, He Himself will bring it about that you will enjoy the desires of your heart. You will see the Lord give you more than you ever had to give up for Him. Absolutely. God always gives more than what you do. And I want to encourage you, give it all for Jesus. That's what consecration means, all for God. Oh, what a good thing to be consecrated, that all is for God. And that we delight ourselves in our communion with Him. It's our greatest joy to experience the presence of the Lord, as David would say in Psalm 16, verse 11 and that we love His presence and that that is better to us than life itself. Amen. 
Oh, I love these scriptures, that Psalm 63, that your loving kindness is better than life itself. Therefore, my lips will praise you and I will lift up my hands into your name. Friends, God wants us to live within that kind of grace that we delight ourselves in Him, okay? Now, let me take you to Psalm 95, which is a messianic psalm that is used, especially in the book of Hebrews. And in Psalm 95, we'll read from verse 6, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, this is what you'll find in Hebrews, today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart. You'll find that in chapter 3. As in the rebellion, as in the days of trial in the wilderness when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my works. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they should not enter my rest. Oh, this is in the book of Hebrews, so phenomenally anointed in how it teaches us there. But this is the point I want you to see. We all go through times in our lives that in some way or another seem like a wilderness. A wilderness means that every day is a dependence of our Savior. Not that it at any other time is not, but that particular time in our life, it's some people say, oh, I'm just surviving. Oh, well, you know, I don't know. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here, but okay, I know He wants me to be here. I don't understand, but see, they're in the wilderness and they have to completely rely on daily on Him and He's training their hearts and He's conforming and transforming their inner thoughts to be, learn to live by God's counsel and thereby begin to recognize His ways. And while the children were in the wilderness and saw His works, they never learned His ways. They never learned His ways. And if you look with me at Psalm 106, right? then you can see what the Lord really is referring to that was one of the main arguments in their lives and also so can be in our lives, right? We're in verse 12 of Psalm 106, also talking about this time in the wilderness. Then they believed His word and sang His praises. They soon forgot His works. They did not wait for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their souls. Mm. Interesting teaching. You see, this is where we choose to walk in God's counsel and learn his ways or refuse his counsel and will not learn his ways. Though we can say, yeah, I know God did that, I know God that, it hasn't transformed our lives. Give me a New Testament example, Pastor. They were gathered with Jesus for three days on the other side of the lake of Genesareth, a large crowd, there was at least 5,000 men there and their families. And Jesus wanted to send them home, but not without feeding them as the journey was long. And so he said to Philip, Philip, what shall we do to feed them? And Philip said, Lord, a year's wages would not be enough to give just some of them food. But Jesus already known what he was going to do. Peter brought him a young boy who had three loaves and five fishes. And Jesus blessed them and broke them and fed the multitudes. And they had 12 baskets left over. And many things happened at that time, but he sent his disciples in the boat across the lake while he went on the mountain to pray at three in the morning. I'm going to give you just a quick little. He came walking to them on the water. Peter said, if it's you, then bid me to come. And he walked on the water together. They came in the boat and everybody was amazed. And, and, and Jesus said, are your heart still hard that you do not understand about the loaves and fishes? Right? That's an interesting 
scenario there. And then the next day, the people who had been with him on the other side of the lake found him and said, how did you get here? And he said, you do not look for me because, because of me, but because you ate the loaves. If you eat the bread you ate then, you will die in your sin. But if you eat the bread I give you, you will live. I am the bread of life. You'll find this in John 6. I am the bread of life. Right? So what's the point, Pastor? What's the example? They'd seen his works multiplying the breads and the fishes, and they ate it even. They partook of these miraculous works, but it did not transform their lives. Not even the disciples. Their hearts were still hard. They didn't have an inward spirit life come into them to show them God's ways. They didn't understand God's ways. And there's many people who have experiences in their life, but don't know His ways because they don't walk in His counsel. They don't understand what it means to walk in His ways, and they repeat the same issue. And I, I, I've been there, folks. I've been there many times, and it's taken the Lord a long time in certain areas of my life to help me conquer the giants that taunted and, and, and came constantly against me in the same areas. And praise the Lord that the Lord does give you victory when you stay in His counsel, and He will teach you His ways that you get into the point you know, no, these feelings and these thoughts, I leave them with God. I stay in His rest. I keep my ear to His word to hear His voice. I wait on the Lord's counsel. That's what it says here. And they would not wait for His counsel. I wait on the Lord's counsel. He will direct me. He will guide me. These feelings, I know. If I follow them, I step out of His counsel. I step out of His ways. And it will cause hurt and pain. And no, I'm not going to follow that. Yes. I desire, I want, but if I follow that, then I know I step out of His counsel. No, I'm not following these desires, these thoughts, and committing them to God. I'm surrendering to the Lord. I'm waiting on His counsel. He will guide me. He will instruct me. He will lead me. And friends, this is more important than you may realize. So, Pastor, help me, because what you're describing I'm one of these people. I don't wait on this counsel. I let my feelings, I let my emotions, I let my desires just go, and then things don't go the way they should go. And I know it's, it's my own desires, my own wants, my own needs that gets me into trouble. I mean, that in itself actually is a phenomenal revelation that you stop blaming somebody else but realize that you are being driven by your need, your want, your desire. And you're not walking in the way of the Lord. You're not walking in His counsel. You're walking in, your own, in the counsel of your own will, your own desire, your own thoughts. And they cause strife and pressure. And they cause you to bring pain to other people who have to serve you lest you throw a fit and get angry. So, well, Pastor, <laughs> I know, yeah, that's me. What do I do? What do I do? Well, I'll close with this part of the scripture that is just absolutely amazing. It has so taught me. You know, God will give His Word to guide you. It's Exodus chapter 33, where De Moses is before the Lord. And he says to the Lord in verse 13, Now I pray, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, Show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider this nation that they are your people. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. He said, If your presence doesn't go with us, then don't let me move from here. I, I can't go on the way I've gone without your presence. I can't live anymore without it. I make a mess of it. Jeremiah said this, Lord, even at my best, I make a mess of it. Guide me, counsel me, show me your way. And he says, for how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we will be separate, your people and I, from the people upon the face of the earth. And the Lord says, I will also this, do these things you have spoken for. You have found grace in my sight, and I know you. I know you, Moses. I know I can trust you with my presence. So this is 
what you need to follow. Read this in Exodus chapter 33 here, starting at verse 13 through 17. I mean, it's all powerful. The whole chapter is amazing. Exodus 33, 13 through 17. Read it and pray it and say, Father, I know this is not your way, the way it's going is my will, my need, my desire, my hurt, my pain, my frustration, my irritation. Lord, I, I'm, I'm looking through the shaded glasses of my own heart and my own mind. I don't see things from your perspective, Father. I, I make a mess. I'm making a mess of it. And the very blessings you want to give me, I'm fighting against it. I'm my worst enemy, Lord. Help me. Show me what your way. If I have found grace in your sight through Jesus Christ, Father, then show me your way that I may know you, Father. Show me your way. Bring me into the knowledge of your ways, Father. Your way, not my way. Your will, not my will. Your heart's desires and not my heart's desires. Lord, I give you my heart's desires. I give you my hurt, my pain, my frustration, my irritation. I surrender it all to you, Lord. I surrender. Come, Lord. Come into my heart, come into my mind by your spirit and show me now your ways. Counsel me, Lord, counsel me, show me your ways, Father. Oh, Father, I want your way in this situation, your way. If you honestly hear this, and I know you are, and begin to seek it daily, begin to pursue it, begin to pursue it and say, Lord, please, Lord, I roll all of these works Proverbs 16, verse 3, unto you. I roll my marriage, I roll my desire within my marriage unto you, Father. I want my heart and my mind to come in agreement with your heart and mind concerning this. Lord, I need your heart and mind about this. Oh, I tell you the truth. If you're truly committed to the Lord and release it to Him, surrender it to Him and keep surrendering it. The problem with living sacrifices I once read is that they crawl off the altar before the fire has completed its work. In other words, you, you say, yes, I want your will, but before you know it, you're back in your own. So what do you got to do? You got to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And you got to keep coming and coming and coming and coming and keep coming. And you will see that every time you come, it's not in vain. God works His grace into you so much so that you will see His ways in your life. Amen. Have a good day.